is part two of my Meddings drill video and you can find part one on my page please uh, please subscribe um, and you'll find it there uh, so on with part two so having given quite a lot of thought to where the box could go I've decided to mount it here uh, above the uh, the little tray that the chuck sits on obviously the drills turn through 90 uh, so that you can see um, what's going on uh, but that means that it'll be on the opposite side to the um, to, to the handle that brings the chuck up and down um, and sufficiently out of the way uh, but um, close enough so that it'll be easy to press the e-stop with my left hand i.e. the hand that's free because the right hand will be using this um, and it keeps the stop start buttons away from any of the moving parts and so I'm less likely to catch a sleeve or anything in the mechanism so that's the scheme and this isn't the actual box this is the actual box um, and I've mounted a metal plate on the back there it is riveted on and I've cut two holes put the cabling in there's the cable that goes to the motor there's a cable that comes off just goes to 13 amp plug because uh, it doesn't really draw very much current and uh, I've used this uh, SY cable so it's an armoured um, steel wire armoured cable but still flexible um, as I say the box is mounted on the metal plate which also has two holes drilled in the side there to um, uh, I think they're M6, can't remember off the top of my head I've drilled two M6 holes in the casting here uh, which um, I can report was absolutely as hard as iron and got through quite a few drill bits and then I've tapped those out um, with, a six, uh, with an M6 tap um, to put a thread in there so that means that this box now can mount on there and be screwed in place cable goes round behind it uh, which you probably can't quite see from that angle but it does and there's the gland that goes into the side of the motor if I swing it around you can see where the motor is threaded to accept a gland box mounted here screwed into here and I'll do something to sort out keeping the cable out of the way um, at the back here so I think as I mentioned earlier the terminals on the bottom of the motor are um, a post type terminal uh, threaded, um, threaded post and there are some small uh, nuts and washers to go onto those so I thought probably the neatest solution to put the cables onto those would be to use uh, some small um, crimp terminals like this and uh, put them on with the crimper uh, this is a ratcheting crimper um, which doesn't release until it gets all the way the other th good thing about these is that the jaw is considerably wider than some of the um, cheaper ones that are um, non-ratcheting and generally made out of a piece of pressed steel um, I find these to be um, considerably better so I'm just going to go and put those terminals on there um, this is the live there it goes and the neutral and the earth and uh, I, I know that both of those wires are black it's just uh, the reason that I know that which is live and which is neutral is that they're numbered 1 and 2 and I made a note of it earlier ok uh, so I'm going to fit that into the bottom of the motor uh, I'm going to see if I can get the camera lined up so that it can point up into there uh, but uh, let's see how I get on so after struggling with uh, the wiring of the motor <laughs> with it um, effectively upside down on the drill um, it occurred to me that maybe it would be quicker to take the motor off and put it on the bench and um, and then I'm the right way up and I was right um, the two terminals that you can see uh, are the live and the neutral which have gone on to those two A, Z and A I don't know what that means but that's just what it said on the um, on the instructions and earth there going onto the body of the motor. Now I wired that motor earth back to uh, this is the um, switch box back to the um, uh, back to the corner of the switch box where the mounting screw goes 
onto the body of the drill where that earth then joins onto the um, earth from the incoming lead from the plug. So there's a continuous earth through the switch, through the body of the drill and, um, and onto the motor so it should be okay in that respect. And uh, finally I fitted this uh, gland. And it's a nylon gland uh, as indeed are the two on the back of there because those are what I had um, in my box of bits and I think on reflection I should have put some brass ones to be in keeping with the um, the general sort of ruggedness of the drill but hey ho, um, they'll be okay. Um, that's a standard 20mm M20 gland screwed into the casing there which was threaded. Tighten that off. Job done. So um, put the cover back on there. Uh, let's cover over there. There's a gasket for it but that just fits, um, fits over there. Somehow, can't remember exactly how. I'm, uh, I'm going to get on and do that. So that's the motor mounted back on the drill and I'm now going to fix the switch onto the side. So there's two holes that I drilled and slapped earlier and I've got some nice uh, Allen key head screws, where's the lens? There. Uh, is that in focus? There we go. Allen key head uh, little um, M6 screws which I'm going to pop in. Twist that around. It's the earth wire that I mentioned earlier on in that corner. And I'm going to pop, uh, going to pop a screw through there. But I'm going to put the bottom one in first so I get the uh, box located. drill as it's on drill rather than screwdriver. Okay so that's uh, mounted quite uh, nice and tightly and uh, I can now put the cover back on there. Just tidy the wiring up. That should fit in quite nicely. There we go. Okay, so there's the motor in place. The belt is on. It's the old belt, so I still can't find the new one. The switch box is mounted properly and I've tidied up the cable. Um, you probably can see that the belt is on the second to slowest speed. Uh, I can't get it to um, I can't get it to run on the slowest speed because the, melt, the, um, uh, the belt drops off as it was doing before on the old motor. Now I suspect that's because the band is stretched, the belt is stretched. I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to have to investigate that further. Um, but it is working. Um, so here we go. Uh, I can stop it with a stop button. Stops pretty much straight away. Um, interestingly, uh, without the uh, belt connected to the motor when I first ran it up, um, the motor stops pretty quickly as well. Uh, which is which is a good thing. So it's not actually the friction in the system that's stopping it, um, uh, which is good. Uh, so I'm going to start up again to stop it on the e-stop. Okay. Now the e-stop's in. I can't I can't restart it until I twist the e-stop. E-stop comes out. Brilliant. Start. Stop. This time, um, get that into the shop. There's the plug and socket. I'm going to start it. I'm going to pull the plug. Now if I put the plug back in, machine won't start. Job done. Okay, well, let's see how it works. Got a bit of scrap metal, looks to be about 3mm I would say, steel that is. Pop that on there, uh, drill bit, 10mm. Stick that in. Put the guard back on. Need to pull the bed up a little bit. OK. 
Okay. Safety glasses. Now I haven't got any cutting fluid, so I'm just going to put a bit of WD on there. And away we go. Just need to adjust the guard slightly. It's got it. Nothing wrong with that. Well, I hope you enjoyed the uh, video and um, if you did please um, click subscribe and uh, perhaps write a comment um, and maybe that will spur me on to, um, to make some more films. Thanks a lot then, bye.